Hello, welcome to the channel. Um, first off, I'd like to say thank you for those that have subscribed and um, watched my previous videos. I didn't expect the um, the response of well, how many have watched and and liked my videos. Um, I thank you very much for that. So from there, I'll try and continue to to put um, videos that are trying to be informative and excuse how my speech is really it's it's not easy to um, talk about this stuff that without getting off topic and so bear with me and I'll try and get through this as least painful as possible so Cleveland oiling pump we all think we know how an oiling pump works but there's some things that some people I've, I've watched other videos in regards to how oil pumps have been demonstrated and how they work but there seems to be a fundamental that is lost and I wish to demonstrate for you today what that's about now for doing it to do that um, we need to obviously understand that a pump has two jobs, all right? There's more than one job for the oil pump. The first job is to bring oil from the sump up into the unit. To do that, it creates a vacuum point by enlarging, mechanically creating a void that is then filled by the oil. When it is full, when it is full, sorry, the rotor then turns and then the size then shrinks which pressurizes the fluid to go in this void down into here which then goes down down there and from there that piece that center hole goes into your um, into your block and feeds the oiling system the pin obviously is governed by the spring so your spring pressure in here governs your oil pressure so when your oil pressure reaches its predetermined point the spring here that's that's the job of the spring if you want more oil pressure increase the spring pressure here and you will increase your oil pressure so that is the basics of the pump first to bring the oil up into it and then to force it down into the oiling system. What flow that is not going into the um, into the engine is then bypassed and returned back to this side of the pump. Now, I suppose I'll make a second video, but the flow that goes down into your oil is determined by your clearances, namely your bearing clearances in your crank cam the um, clearance between your lifters and the hole size that is in the top of the rocker arms if those are if you make those bigger then you have more oil flow the pressure doesn't change you just have more oil flow okay now the reason why people get a little bit confused with this and we're going to now do this now is that we're going to measure the pump and see how much volume this pump will move at one up at one rotation and from there we can work out how much this pump moves at a thousand rpm i've got a little bit of grease in there just to try and seal the gaps and i've got a basic 35 mil syringe and all i'm going to do is just start filling in the gap until it gets full so I'm going to do it as quickly as possible so we don't hopefully leak everywhere and that volume is going to hopefully be like off so I'll just go a little bit higher than necessary which is about there surprisingly 10 cc's now then what the importance of that is is that because this turns half crank speed two of these lobes are going to be filled with 10 cc's of oil so you're going to have 20 cc's of oil flow per revolution uh, per crank revolution 
pretty ridiculous, isn't it? So, what we've just established is that per crank revolution, we have two lobes that get filled with oil, which means this pump will want to move 20 cc's of oil per RPM. Or, if we look at it at proper crank speed, this, oil, this pump is going to want to move 20 litres of oil in a minute. Or, if we actually go down to what the sump capacity is, which is 4 litres, this pump's going to rotate and try and demand and try and pull 4 litres of oil in 12 seconds. So, this pump will empty the pan in 12 seconds at idle. So, why doesn't it do that? Well, first thing it does, well, first thing it, it, first thing it is going to do is the requirements of the engine well determined by your bearing clearance and all that type of stuff so the amount of oil that goes into and through the engine is not going to be four liters it's going to be much less so whatever that the engine is going to need i can't tell you what it is i, I can't measure that unfortunately i'd love to but right now i can't do that but let's say for argument's sake this is half a litre, 500 mils going up here, per minute. So what does that mean? It means that the other... ...20 litres, it means the, tw the other 20 litres is going to be bypassed. It's going to go through the bypass valve and it is going to go back to this side of the pump. So what does that ultimately mean? Well, it means that the, the engine, is going to, or the pump, is going to be wanting to try to pull the excess, because the bypass goes through here, any more of the vacuum that's created in here and it is not being able to supply, be supplied coming back through the um, bypass valve is going to come from the sump. So you're going to have half a litre of draw into here. And that's, the sim and that's your simple circuit. And the funny thing is, is that it doesn't matter if it's 1000 RPM or 10,000 RPM, the amount of volume that's going up here will always be lower than what the pump can supply. So, in that basis, this pump, or the pressure side of a pump, is never going to be dry. So, with that basic knowledge we now have to go and go well, why do pumps run out of oil and the, and the problem is really quite a simple one this pump rotates and it, because it's mechanical it is a mechanical demand so you can't shortcut it if the oil is not being supplied into this pump fast enough either by the pickup or by the bypass return it creates a vacuum in the fluid and when we introduce vacuums into fluids they don't decrease in size they don't do too much but what they can and what they do do is when the vacuum gets high enough we cavitate the fluid in other words we have lowered the pressure supplied to the fluid enough to boil it and that boiling allows a bubble to grow and when the bubble is formed in here, or when the bubble is formed in the bottom of here, then we have a problem, is that the pump can no longer fill the void with oil, and then we lose oil pressure. So, you'll find that on most dynos, you'll see that the oil pressure gauge will start off steady, and it will gently climb, and it'll climb, and then it'll reach peak, at a certain RPM and then it'll begin to fall off once oil pressure begins to fall the pump is starting to cavitate it's not going to do it it's not starting it doesn't instantly do it and just instantly chop itself off the volume in the pump so the volume in the gears and the mesh is greater than what the volume can be supplied into that area of the pump and this is the importance as to why people go in with their die grinder and take the sharp edges off of here and open up 
don't think you can no you can't get down i can't get the light down in here but anyway they take this tube out and they pour it all in here and they make it all nice so that the, the fluid coming through the pickup tube into this area is all nice and smooth and radius is radius and there's no sharp edges and that what that means is that if we take oh i'm just trying to it's it's like if you can imagine standing in wind and if you're on the edge of a building now the wind will want to rip past the building and keep going and in on the lee side of the building there'll be a low pressure zone and that's where when we put that put that thing we apply it to air when we take that example with air and we apply it with fluid that means all the sharp edges all the fluid flow in those areas are potential low pressure spots so that's where cavitation is going to occur so by radiusing them off and allowing oil flow to be all in those areas we reduce the chance or reduce the opportunity for cavitation to occur so that's the point now what I have read is that cavitation on a Cleveland pump on a Cleveland oiling pump cavitation becomes a real pro real problem when you hit 7000 rpm and this is a standard oil pump if you had a high volume pump cavitation will be cavitation will begin more much earlier because these gears are bigger and so the demand for oil to come up into this pump is higher it's a simple fact you increase your mechanical size of the pump you increase the demand that is needed to go into the pump you increase the pressure the vacuum pressure that is applied to the fluid the chance of cavitation goes up and it doesn't matter if it's a cleveland windsor big block chrysler big block chevy um ls anything they all do the same thing i even have i even had the same um i've had the problem on a, a little engine little 4a ge um i was drag racing and i missed a shift i went from instead of going down to fourth i found second gear um revved the engine mechanically revved the engine over 10,000 rpm and what that did was is the pump exceeded or it, its demand it, wa it wanted to have a certain volume flowing into the pump and the pickup tube couldn't supply that and so it cavitated when the pump cavitated the engine instantly lost all um all oil pressure and it ran a bearing so apply that same apply those same th uh, physics and applications to your point so when porting a pump focus primarily on the passive so your feed side of the pump because your cavitation is going to be the first problem of any pump so just um so just remember that so i suppose that was um that's the point i wanted to highlight this time um i've actually was talking to a friend and he actually managed to donate a um drive shaft for the oil pump and we came to the conclusion that the the next problem that um, faces an oil pump is the amount of pressure or the amount of torque that is put on the drive shaft that you it usually shears so we've come up to the conclusion that we're going to put a drive shaft we're going to put the oil pump drive shaft and the bottom of this we're going to put it in a vise and we're going to put a torque wrench on it and we're going to find out how much torque is required to break a pump such an interesting video to watch all right um hopefully that's enough for today um it'll give you a reason to why you should always if you're going to port if you're going to do porting and um, smoothing and radicing anything to do with the pump always do the passive side of the pump don't worry too much about the B. don't worry too much about this side but the passive side of the pump and also focus around where it returns which is down in there you can't see it unfortunately Actually, if i pick it up might be able to there we go there's the pin and there's the return so focus on those areas which will help assist the oil flow coming back into the um 
the passive side of the pump. So yeah, well, that's enough of me yabbering on for now. Um, thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.